Well, hello and welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. I am Pastor Autry and Happy New Year to everyone today. And I hope that your New Year's celebration has been a wonderful kickoff. And I am praying that we would all have a great 2023. God has been with us in 2022 and looking forward to even greater experiences, greater opportunities to be a part of God's kingdom building program in 2023. Very excited about returning to our study of the book of Ephesians. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to have that fresh spirituality or fresh spiritual life. Well, thank you for joining us again, and I'm really, really excited about this portion of Scripture that we're going to be studying. Uh, We are in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32. If you haven't had a chance to read this portion, uh, go ahead and pause the video and jump back in as we jump to it. And, And I'm really jumping to it. I'm really, really excited about the topic, fresh spirituality. How do we keep that spiritual life fresh and vibrant? How do we maintain it? How do we grow? grow in it and go deeper through the year because you know we're at the beginning of 2023 hopefully it's a great new year for you and a great kickoff and I'm believing that God will do many great things uh, through your life for 2023 Uh, But the truth is, we start out with a bang in January, don't we? I know some of you even watching now, you probably don't even like to do New Year's resolutions because usually by the third week, you've forgotten what the resolution was, right? If you're like me, okay? So we start out with a bang. We say, we make up our minds, you know what? I'm going to have a better prayer life. I'm going to get into the word. You know what? I'm going to get into the things of God. I'm going to be more active in terms of ministry. I want to make a difference in the lives of individuals. I'm going to live this Christian faith with vitality and power. But then something happens around end of February or March, right? We kind of lose energy. We lose that spiritual freshness. We lose that vitality. Somehow we're on a spiritual or religious treadmill and we don't have the energy we once had before. What happened? We start out with a bang and then we start to fizzle. And I believe in this portion of scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 26, Paul gives us the one principle that I think can help us maintain or even grow with a fresh spirituality. But before we do that, let me just give you a really quick recap of what Paul's trying to do. Again, the book of Ephesians can be divided into two segments. Chapters 1, 2, and 3, that's the calling. Chapters 4, 5, and 6, that is the conduct. Put another way, chapters 1, 2, 3, that's the work of God. Chapters 4, 5, and 6, that is the walk we have with God. And you see the word walk show up a number of places in chapters 4 through 6. In verse 1 of chapter 4, walk worthy of the calling. Chapter 4, verse 17, walk no longer like the Gentiles. In the scripture, the portion of scriptures that we're studying right now. Chapter 5, verse 2, walk in love. Chapter 5, verse 8, walk as children of light. Chapter 5, verse 15, be careful how you walk. And so there's this idea, God's done the work. Work, let's walk with him. And in a sense, Paul is kind of hearkening back to the Garden of Eden, where, where Adam and Eve, before they ate of the fruit and fell, they had this unhindered access uh, to God where they could enjoy him and walk in such a peaceful and, and prosperous existence. And there's a sense that Paul says, look, we've been given that back. Jesus is the last Adam and he's brought us back into this experience where we can actually come and enjoy God and enjoy his presence and have an ongoing experience of a fresh spirituality. That That's exactly what he's trying to raise. And so the key verse in this portion of scripture is Ephesians 4 verses 20 through 24. I'm going to read it. He says in verse 20, but you did not learn Christ in this way. And here by learn, he means this is not some philosophy. You you didn't learn a new branch of philosophy. This is not academic. 
The Christian faith is not about having the right answers. And boy, don't we need to get away from that? I think that's the first step into legalism. When we make Christianity an academic exercise, we begin to develop our own spiritual Ten Commandments that fit us. And we wonder why we lose that freshness. And Paul says, no, you didn't learn Christ that way. No, no, that's not what you learned. Look what he says. He says, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him. Notice what he says, heard him, not heard of him, heard him, heard him directly. The Christian faith is a relationship. We walk with him. And so in a word, here it is. It's that engagement. The engagement produces renewal. The engagement with Christ produces renewal. Let me say it again. Engagement produces renewal. And so that's the idea. When we engage him, heard him, and have been taught in him, just as truth as in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceits, and that you be renewed. There it is, renewed in the spirit of your mind. When we engage him, we are renewed. That's the idea. And we're going to see this word again in other places in scripture very quickly. And put on the new self which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. And so here the key phrase, engagement for renewal, engagement for renewal. As we engage him, heard him, as we relate with him, we have him by means of the Holy Spirit. That's where the renewal begins. And this idea of renewal is not something uh, new. It's not something that um, that is, is brand new here. Paul mentions it in Romans 12, verse 2. If you remember, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transferred, what? By the renewing of your mind. But in Ephesians 4, he gives detail as to what it means to renew the mind. We also see it again in Colossians, Colossians 3. Verses 8 through 11, where he says, do not lie to one another since you have, here it is, laid aside the old self with its evil practices and put on a new self, here it is, who is being renewed in, to, to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. And so there's that renewal as we engage him, we're renewed. And so the idea here that Paul is pulling off, he's, he's using the metaphor of putting on and pulling off clothing, literally laying aside or pulling off clothing and putting on clothing. And what he's saying is basically in the same way as you have to undress yourself and dress yourself every day, you have to undress and redress yourself spiritually every single day, every single day. In another place, Paul says, I die daily. What does he mean by that? Every day I got to undress and redress. Every day I got to pull off something I got to pull on something just as I pull off my clothes from the previous day. I got to put on some new clothes. That is the key to the spiritual life. How are we renewed? We got to take something off and we got to put something new on. That's the idea. I got to lay aside something. I got to put something up, put, uh, pick up something. That's the idea in Colossians 3. That's the idea in Romans 12. And that's the idea here in Ephesians 4. I got to lay aside something. Then I got to pick up something. Uh, this idea is also illustrated even in the uh, the the. Uh, the ordinance of baptism. Usually we think of baptism on the front end and surely that's where it belongs, that those who trust Christ are baptized into the body of Christ. That's exactly what happens. Christ redeems us when we trust him by faith and then he takes us and baptizes us and makes us members of the body, the universal body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. But but baptism doesn't start there, not to be resaved all over again, but to be Wash to be cleansed. And so we're 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 cleansed every single day. We have to wash just as we have to wash physically every single day. And you should do that every single day, man, just as you should brush your teeth every single day. Spiritually, we have to wash every day and 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 be renewed. So it's something that happens every single day. There's a discipline to it. Engagement for renewal. I gotta pull off something and put something on. That's the idea. And that's how we remain. That's how we keep that fresh spiritual life. And so just a couple of things very quickly. If you read through the rest of the scripture from verses 25 through 32, Paul suggests that we ought to take off and put on some things. He says, take off line, put on truth. And, and you and you have these dichotomies all throughout the, the practices. Take off the anger. And he says, let don't let the sun go down on your anger. But then put what he means by that, put on calm. 
Put on calm. And so here, here's the idea. He'll say, take off stealing, then put on sharing. You know, Don't steal anymore, but look, if you work, share it with somebody. So here's the idea. Usually Christians try to work on stopping a habit. I'm going to stop lying. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop this destructive habit. Paul said, no. Yeah, stop, the, stop what you're trying to do. But at the same time, you've got to start something new. Pull off what you shouldn't be doing, but you got to put on something in, in, in exchange or in as a replacement for what you're doing. And so if I do struggle with falsehood, if I struggle with gossiping, I probably should put on encouragement. I probably should put on positive words. And I got to be intentional with it if that's my struggle. If I struggle with anger, then I got to put on some kind of mechanism that helps me calm down in that moment. No, I got to be peaceful. Maybe it's simply saying, look, give yourself a moment so that you can respond to the issue in a more civil manner. Many times we take uh, uh, working on our anger to mean that we keep our opinions to ourselves. No, express your opinion. Take the emotion out of it. Take the anger out of it. I think that's what Paul is getting at. Uh, be angry, but sin not. Yes, you can keep the opinion that you're fired up about it, but don't uh, work on divorcing the emotion from it so that you can speak calmly and, and speak to what needs to be said. Take off the bitterness, the anger, the wrath, the yelling, all that stuff, and then put on kindness, put on compassion, put on forgiveness. And so even the things that may make me angry or the people that may make me angry. He says, put on kindness. In other words, remember that they're made in the image of God. Uh, remember that they have dignity and you want them to treat you the way you ought to treat them, right? And so that's the idea of kindness. Put on compassion, meaning that maybe there's something behind it that we don't understand that's driving the behavior. And that's what compassion is. God gives us compassion and does not give us what we deserve, but he gives us mercy or compassion, what we don't deserve, because he understands that sometimes the things we do is being driven by something that is behind the behavior, some brokenness, some issue, some challenge, maybe even some sin that has us in bondage and God gives us compassion or forgiveness. Sometimes simply saying, I messed up, I'm sorry, or please forgive me. That can diffuse the situation and actually invite the spirit of God to revolutionize the relationship or the issue. And so those are just a few thoughts about fresh spirituality. Usually what I say in this kind of situation, if you find yourself uh, struggling, you find yourself, you know what, I, I don't have the vitality. It probably means it's time to take up something new. Take off something old, put on something new. So maybe the way you're praying or what you're praying about is gotten old. It's time to take up a new way of praying or a new approach to praying or new things to pray about. Or maybe do some research personally on prayer, developing a theology of prayer, maybe following the lifestyle of Jesus and looking at his prayer life and begin to pray back his prayers or pray or just start with the Lord's prayer, etc. And that becomes the pattern for what you pray about. Or maybe you start praying back the Psalms, take off the old, put on something new. You say, well, you know, I can't get into the word. One of the things that I'm doing this year, listen, I've read through the word numerous times for the first time in my life. I'm 61 years old. I'm actually going to listen to the word from Genesis to Revelation. And I'm just completely excited about it, blown away at the new way and the new experiences I'm already having by listening to the word. Uh, if you have the church app, you can you can access um the audio version through the Journey 365 Biblical Story. If you don't have the church app, simply text um, CC Richardson app to 77977 and simply follow the prompts. And then if you go, I think it's into events. I'm pretty sure that's the correct one. Uh, there, There's a link there that you just tap on that gets you to the um, the Journey 365 and, and that'll get you going in terms of that audio uh, version of Scripture. So sometimes it's maybe approaching the scriptures a little bit differently, or maybe it's it's taking on a different subject in Christianity or in the scriptures and seeing how God is speaking to you through that. Or maybe it's exposing yourselves to different yourself to different ways of serving in the church or serving outside of the church or serving other people or taking upon some personal challenges as to how you can make a difference in the world. The point is, sometimes I got to put down some old ways and I got to pick up something new. That's the idea. 
and, 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 and it's so easy to get comfortable and think that there's only one way that we can, we can experience this fresh spirituality. And Paul's saying, no, hey, it's a, it's a daily thing. You got to take off some things and you got to put on something. That's what it is. Take off something, put on something new. That's the idea. I'll close with this. I had one pastor tell me years ago, and it stayed with me uh, for my entire ministry. He said, the call is something you got to answer every single day. Every single day. It's not something that happened in your life some 40, 50, or 60 years ago. And that may be true, he said. But no, it, it, it's something that you got to answer every single day. And that's the key to a fresh spirituality. It's something you got to answer every single day. I sure would love to hear your thoughts in the chat. How are you handling uh, your spiritual life? What helps you to stay fresh? What helps you to remain engaged? How do you get that engagement with God's spirit towards renewal? I sure would love to hear your thoughts. God bless you. And I will be looking for you in the next video. Take care.